Welcome everyone to Hexatrains. And I'd like to get started by saying a thank you to Mr. Bram Stoke for allowing me access to an early version of the game so that I could make this video for you guys today. Now, Hexatrains is very similar to some other games we've played in the past here on the channel. And that is, it is a simulation game. We're dealing with the economy and, and growing an economy as efficiently as we possibly can. And it's about trains. So we're going to spend a lot of time building train tracks and uh, making sure that each of the different industries on the map have what they need for the most efficient production. And then, of course, we're going to ultimately need to supply the cities with things like food and finished goods. So a lot of gameplay, a lot of uh, a puzzle type atmosphere in here because you're going to have to figure out where the different industries are and how to connect the dots between the two. And we'll see more about that here in just a moment when we get into the game itself and take a look at some gameplay. But I wanted to start you guys out here on the Steam interface so that you could see what the game looks like. As you're searching for the game on Steam, you'll know exactly when you found it. So this is a game by a single developer, Mr. Bram Stoke, who is providing this game. It is due for release on coming up on October the 7th. So... That date is fast approaching when we'll all be able to get our hands on the final version of the game. So this game is about railroads. We're going to attempt to make the planet's economy run as efficiently as possible. And we're going to do that with the placement of our railroad lines, as well as the number and the location of the trains that we put on different routes and how many stops do they have, all of that kind of thing. One thing we're not going to have to deal with is money. You're not going to have the issue of how much money do I start the game with and how quickly do I run through that as I'm putting down my first uh, railroad tracks and purchasing my first trains. You're not going to have to worry about that. This is a game all about efficiency and it has a real sandbox and puzzle vibe to it because you can do anything you want. Place tracks wherever you want and... The puzzle aspect is trying to figure out exactly the best way to get goods from A to B and grow that economy. So the system requirements, minimum and recommended specs are here at the bottom of the screen. And you can see pretty basic on the specs here. You're looking at an i5 to an i7 processor, 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, you just need an integrated GPU, basically. Or, if you're going recommended specs, then a discrete GPU, which essentially means you have a graphics card in your system. So very basic, as you can tell from uh, the screenshots. The graphics style has a very, uh, a very unique quality about it. And as you zoom in on the game world, it really starts to come to life, particularly as we get more and more trains up and running. So that'll take care of our introduction. Now let's move into the game. Once in game, you're going to be greeted with several different options, beginning with a tutorial at the very top. And the tutorial, of course, is going to show you the basics, how to lay down the tracks and some shortcuts associated with that. And then things like adding a train to that track, setting up the different options for the train, uh, where does it need to stop, what is its round trip, and so on. We can also customize the planet, each planet, in each new game start is going to look differently, not only in the placement of things like uh, the water versus the land mass, but also in the location of the different farms and warehouses and cities and so on around the map. We can also uh, change up the options on the different uh, color scheme used for both the land as well as uh, the ocean or the sea. Okay, we're going to click OK there. We can come down and start a new game or resume one if we have a saved game already in progress. You can click here for a guide. This will actually take you to uh, back over to Steam where the developer has uh, put a guide out there just to show you, again, some of the basics of the game and to help you along in case you're having uh, any issues or or encounter any snags along the way. There's a leaderboard and then finally a credit section. For our purposes today, we're gonna to get started in a new game and just look at what some of the early gameplay looks like. As we get started in the game, we're of course met with the game world itself, our planet, 
And in the bottom left hand corner, there is a menu option with all of the different shortcuts of the keys that we can use to help us out. We can hide that with the F1 key. So we can get rid of that. And if we scroll out just a little bit more, you can see the, real, the edge of a moon over here to the corner. So if I click on the moon, then we can focus in on it. Uh, but for now, we're actually going to move back over to the main planet. Now you notice it is fairly dark right now, and that is because of some options you have within the game. So if I press the F10 key, we have some different options and we have a day night cycle. So if I turn that off, you can see it's daylight all the time and we're not gonna have to worry about uh, dealing with any nighttime, but right now I have the day night cycle turned on. So as we move the planet around, portions of the planet are gonna be in the darkness, other portions will be in uh, the daylight. Okay, so let's actually scroll across uh, to a portion that is in the daylight. And let's take a look at some of the industries that are found in the game world. We start out with, you can see what looks like fields and a farm, and that's because it is a farm. So th that makes them pretty easy to spot across the map. Same thing if we move over a little bit further, here's a coal mine, and sure enough, the graphics on the map itself would indicate to us that that is exactly what it is. Also, you notice that the sunlight is moving. So now we're moving into darkness in this area of the map. So we'll scroll back over a little bit. Here is one of our train depots. This is where we will be able to uh, acquire new trains at the top of the screen. Once we click on a depot, you can see we have the new train icon. We can spawn a new train and then uh, set its route to the different industries it needs to go to. Okay, here we see a, a spaceport. And of course that spaceport is gonna send things, if we back out, it's gonna send things to the moon that we were just taking a look at. Then as we continue scrolling, there's another depot that we can use to uh, add new trains to our routes. We've got cities, and again, they are fairly easy to spot. You'll have bigger cities and smaller cities. And the cities are looking for food and goods and as I move my mouse over the different options, you can see it's going to show me exactly where that food needs to come from. So it's going to show me the location of the bakeries that are nearby and also the goods that are nearby, which we're going to come from warehouses. All right, so if we start to look, let's see, let's head around. There is a sawmill and the sawmill produces lumber. Where is that lumber useful? Well, we see one of the places it's useful is right next door at a warehouse, which is gonna accept that lumber and use it to produce goods for the different cities. All right, so let's find an area where we want to uh, get started. Uh, in fact, let's come back into the options. And for right now, let's just turn off the daylight cycle so that we'll have plenty of daylight to see what we need to see. And I'm gonna take you guys through the beginnings of starting your routes and we can use all of this area. We are not confined to only building over uh, the land portions of the map. We can build bridges across uh, the different water areas on the map without any issue whatsoever. All right, so let's scroll in a little bit on the depot here and get a closer look. We can use hold down the left mouse button uh, to scroll around the planet also the right, right mouse button will rotate the planet as well and because we know that the rail tracks only go in one direction we need to find out which direction these are going in and we see here that they are headed uh, let's see in the direction vaguely that we need to go for that city. So let's just go ahead and connect the city. So I'm gonna hold down the shift button and then move forward one tile at a time. And so then I'm just going straight forward. There is a key for that, a shortcut. If you don't wanna hold down shift and manually move your way through here, you can simply use the arrow keys. The up arrow is gonna go straight ahead. The right arrow will bend the track to the right and then the left arrow bends to the left and the down arrow will actually remove the most recent track that has been placed. 
So here we need to actually go to the right. Then we're going to go back to the left. And I believe that's going to have us straight ahead where we can connect into that city. Yes, it does. All right, so now we've made our first connection, but we're not producing anything yet and we don't have any trains. So what do we need from a city? Well, the city doesn't produce anything. However, it accepts food and goods. So we see that goods can come from a nearby warehouse. What about if we come back over to the city, where is that food gonna come from? It looks like we've got quite a distance here before we're gonna be able to get to any food. Yeah, in fact, we can see right here is a bakery. That's the nearest bakery that I see. So it's gonna be hard for us to provide food early on until we get a little bit more of a network set up. All right, so what about this warehouse? Could we provide goods to the nearby city? All right, where are we gonna get lumber? Well, lumber comes from the sawmill and it is very close by. So we can connect these. All right, that's very good. So let's try to do that. Always being mindful of exactly the direction that we are laying tracks. Uh, so right now, let's see, let's just go ahead and make this straight for a little while. And once again, you can see, we can go right over the water without any issue. Now we're going to turn to the left and go straight for a little bit and then turn back to the left straight once again and we've made it there. All right, so we're ready for a train there. We actually need to create a loop to where we can have a train go back and forth from the sawmill over to the warehouse. So let's go ahead and do just that and then we'll deal with adding a depot uh, and connecting that as well. All right, let's actually go over to the left a little bit here because I'm gonna try to get this warehouse as well as part of this loop and then we can have a couple of trains that are headed back and forth. Now, each one of these industries is going to produce what is needed from them. So right now, nothing is needed, so the sawmill is not producing anything. However, once we start making connections and add trains to the network with the different stops, then it's gonna start producing goods. Now on the other end of the spectrum, we have our warehouse. How much is it gonna produce? Well, it's gonna produce as much as it has the needed materials to produce. However, if none of that is being used, then ultimately it will stop production when its storage is full. So it's all about a balance. It's all about efficiency and trying to figure out the most efficient way to keep everything running. There we go, I think we can get there. Yes, and all I'm doing is using the arrow keys right now. The up arrow places straight, left key uh, bends to the left, right arrow key bends to the right. So we're gonna continue on and let's see, let's go a little bit farther out. Go a little bit straight in that direction. And nope, let's go back just a little bit. There we go. So now we've got a little bit of extra track here uh, to where we can add some connections in later, which are very easy to do. All right, so we have our very first uh, available. Now we need to find a nearby depot so that we can add a train to this area. Um, and I think the easiest way for us to do that will probably be come back over here uh, to the city. And let's go ahead There we go, and let's try to get through here without uh, doing any more destruction to the environment than we absolutely have to. All right, so where I'm headed is right here. I'm gonna connect up right here, and this will allow us to uh, get our train track up and running. All right, there we go. So now we can move right in here 
and make our connection. So as soon as we attempt to lay track over an area that already has track, it will simply make a connection as long as the train tracks are going in the correct direction. But right now these feed in quite nicely. So what I'm gonna do on the other side is actually extend this track over to the depot. So I'm gonna come over, scroll in right here, hold down the shift key and drag out here. You can see we've got another connection and we're simply gonna make the track straight for a little bit. And then we're gonna to turn to the left, go straight for a little while longer. And nope, we need to backspace over that or back arrow. Down arrow will take care of that. And there we go. So now we've connected these up. So we need a train. And then we need to tell the train where to go. So we clicked on the depot. We need to go to the top of the screen, click on new train. And sure enough, now we have train 00 at the top. And we need to come to the top left-hand corner of the screen and set up our route. So where do we want it to go first? Uh, let's scroll over. We need it to go to the sawmill. And from the sawmill, it's going to pick up and then deliver all right, add a warehouse. So now we've only got these two locations. Let's actually have it depart. And as we scroll in a little bit, you can see it's gonna head down the track, go right through the city without any issue. And of course, as time goes on, we can make different bypasses and greatly expand our network because we don't have to worry about the money it would require in order to get all of this uh, up and running. You are free to lay down as much track as you would like. So now the train is coming over. It's going to pick up from the sawmill and then it's going to take it right over to the warehouse. All right, there we go. And then it will simply continue back along. So now let's pick up yet another train and have it go to this other warehouse. Okay, so we're going to come back to our depot, click on it, make sure it's highlighted. New train route, we're going to add sawmill, and then we're going to add our second warehouse, and then we're going to click depart. Now, obviously, we could have additional stations and additional stops here for the train, but for right now, we're going to keep this simple and just have uh, two stops on a round trip. Now you can see we've got this train up and running. So that's train 01. So now we have that part taken care of. So what about whenever we have goods that are being produced by the warehouse? Well, those goods are gonna be used by the different cities. And right now we have one city that is connected to our uh, very small network. So what we're gonna do is get back over to the depot, get a new train, and from here, we're going to add, and we'll just start with this particular warehouse. We'll add this warehouse, and then we'll have it come over to this city and have it depart. So as the trains uh, stop at the different locations, you'll be able to see exactly what they're doing. There you can see 164 lumber was dropped off there. Now we've got train 02 that is coming. He's going to wait here until the track is clear. Now he's moving along. He's gonna come over to the warehouse. He's gonna pick up the goods and he's gonna take them over to the city. So now already just on our small network, we have a total of three trains doing some very basic routes to get us started. So that's gonna take care of the beginning gameplay. Now we'll be back in just a moment to show what it looks like as we move a little further into the game. As we move forward in the game just a little bit, uh, I'll call your attention to the top right hand corner of the screen where you see uh, the P and the S and then some numbers out next to them. The P is production. That's how many units are being produced. And the idea over the course of the game is to continue to grow this. And then the S is a percentage. This is the percentage of all the industries that are being uh, taken care of. So right now we're at 38% and We've still got tons and tons of work to go, but we've come a long way 
in just a very short amount of time. And as I've continued building out this network, uh, this is not at all efficient. I basically just had a ball creating the different connections. And then as I try to connect different areas of the map together, trying to figure out how I can make that happen. Uh, and it is so much fun to be able to do that. So right now we've got quite a bit of food, uh, grain coming from the farms, uh, going over to be processed at the bakery. And then that ends up over in the cities as food. And the food uh, can also go over to, let's see if I can find it on the map here. There it is. Over to the spaceport, it ships out food uh, and it's shipping it out to the moon over there. So we've got uh, that still to do. We're, like I said, we're only at 38% of the map and I feel like we're just getting started. So there's lots more connections to be made. And as I scroll around, uh, you can see I've tried to connect up uh, the different depots as I could just to give me some different areas to pull trains from and get them started. So a lot going on on this map. And again, every time you start a new game, you're going to get a different map that's going to look different and have different placement of the industries, giving you uh, a fresh playthrough each time that you come through and fresh challenges to face and hopefully to conquer as you build the economy. That's going to do it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more Hexatrains.